Now, John Keats, the third of these three poets, Shelley, Byron, and, and Keats, had a very different background from George Gord and Lord Byron. John Keats came from very humble origins, uh, lower class, lower middle class, and he fell in love with writing poetry at an early age. And he wrote, uh, he wrote poetry from pretty much the time that he entered his teenage years and began publishing it and began to gain a notoriety uh, for being a, quite a fine poet indeed. Some people eventually said, had he not died at the age he died, he might have rivaled Shakespeare for his command of words. And you'll notice first in this poem that the tone of the, of the poem, what we call voice in the poem, the voice is a very different type of voice from, say, Byron or from Shelley, where Shelley's voice is almost overdone, uh, wordy, where Byron's voice is rather dark and sometimes sardonic or cynical, Keats has an almost light touch to him. It's a light touch which, of course, is uh, somewhat tongue-in-cheek because John Keats' poems can be taken as being uh, not entirely serious, but at the same time he's addressing certain serious issues in a very, I think, masterful way. Keats has a history where he um, was educated in certain things at, a, at an age, and they came into his worldview and changed him drastically. And one of the things that changed him drastically was this magnificent poem from the ancient world by a poet by the name of Homer. And Homer, who wrote in Greek, was translated by a man named Chapman, who translated him into uh, rhymed couplets uh, in English, but allowed English speakers to have access to uh, Homer for the first time. And John Keats, who didn't speak Greek, uh, read Chapman's Homer and was kind of stunned by it. He was kind of uh, amazed at how uh, fantastic this long extended poem actually was. Somebody like uh, uh, George Gordon Lord Byron, who would have read Greek and probably Latin as well, would have probably been familiar with Homer from very, very young. And so he was something of a snob in that he looked at people like John Keats as being you know, uh, not as good as he was. But one, when, he reads, when you read this poem, one has to marvel at Keats' experience and his ability to express that experience. We have all had an experience where we have not read something and then we read it for the first time and, wow, that's incredible. Or we hear a piece of music or we see a piece of artwork and for the first time it, 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 it stuns us at how great it is. Well, that's what John Keats is describing here. He's describing this universal experience of meeting something magnificent that other, other people have talked about, but we've never experienced ourselves. And consequently, John's, John Keats' poetry is a very personal expression, but it's a personal expression that other people can identify with as a universal experience. Nevertheless, he does have a tongue-in-cheek uh, element to him. So, for instance, when he says, Much have I traveled in the realms of gold and many goodly states and kingdoms seen, John Keats didn't travel very much. And his whole speech here is almost an overblown, uh, um, elegant, I suppose, courtly speech. He's suggesting, I have looked at a great deal of things. I have traveled in realms of gold. But in point of fact, what he's actually doing is he's saying, yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen a lot in my small, lower middle class education. Yeah, but I never thought this existed. Uh, and so he is on the one hand praising Homer, but he's also kind of laughing at the fact that uh, he should have known this at an early age and he, he didn't. The experience that he says is um, something like a watcher of the skies, like an astronomer who's uh, studying the skies. And he sees suddenly this new star comes into his his vision, and he's, he's stunned by it, blown away by it. So that Homer's work is like a star, uh, a nova or supernova we call it now, suddenly appearing in this uh, astronomer's uh, telescope. Or it's like uh, Stout Cortez, he says, who gazes at the Pacific, you know, after he's explored all of America, and Cortez comes to the Pacific, and he looks out and there's a whole nother ocean out here. He looks at his men like, you know, do you understand what this means? This wild surmise that maybe we have just begun to tap into how vast the world is? That seems to indicate that when, when Keats opens Homer and reads Homer, for the first time he realizes that maybe there is a lot more out there 
than I ever thought. Maybe there are poets of such magnificence like Homer that I've just begun to scratch the surface. I've just begun to explore that world of thought and ideas. And that experience is so stunning that it, uh, it makes him silent. He stands silently looking out across the Pacific on a peak in Darien and just takes it in for a minute. It's a remarkable experience that he captures here of, of just being blown away, as we say, by seeing something beautiful for the first time.